Okay, so this is a follow-up video to a previous video I posted. Um, if you came here from that video, well, this is the more tutorial version. Um, I'm going to go into detail about how to repair a pull cord that has pulled out or, you know, the, the spring had skipped, whatever. Um, in this case, it seems like it skipped and the pull cord string is uh, frayed anyway. Um, so I'm going to take a step by step to go through all this because uh, the last video was very uh, intermittent, uh, just hitting the key parts and uh, skipping a lot of the how to's. So I'm going to go a little more uh, detail and um, try to show you step by step how to go through all this. Also, you know, I've learned throughout doing these um, a little bit of tips and tricks to try to make it a little bit quicker, faster, you know, skip a couple things that you don't have to normally do. Um, so what you'll need is a T20. Torx, okay, the Torx bit, and also a T15 Torx, okay. Most of these outer screws are T, uh, T20. There is one on the inside that's a T15. You need a longer handle like that. Um, a bit, I'll be using a bit, uh, probably won't reach down this small hole, so you need the T handle for that. So I'm going to get started here, get some things out of the way. Another thing you'll need is just a regular um, adjustable wrench, possibly um, some sort of uh, clamp, and a uh, spark plug remover. Um, I'll probably be using a multi-tool. Our first thing we're going to do is get these three T20 screws out. And you want to keep these together because there are different sizes and shapes of screws. And if you put the wrong one in the wrong hole, uh, you could end up stripping out a machined hole. So luckily, just pull this cable out. Pull that back down. I don't necessarily have to take this apart. I don't need to take this cable and everything apart. Um, it makes a little bit more of a challenge because things are still attached. However, I can do most of the work kind of like this. All right, so another thing I want to do is get this back cover off. So again, I got a T20 here. Now this is a machined compared to a screw for plastic. So you want to keep these separate. And here you'll need a longer T-handle to get in to here. There's one there. And there's one up here. And then that'll slide off. So the two bottom ones down here are for the uh, machined end. All right, quick tip. Um, this doesn't really have anything to do with what we're doing. But if you're having trouble with one of these running, this is a Murray, but they're pretty much all the same. The Troy builds, the uh, whatever, they're all pretty much the same. But this piece that goes into the engine here with the O-ring around it, if this is cracked or, or, or shredded or any type of broken or the O-ring's missing, it won't seal off the motor. You won't have compression and you'll, uh, you'll your machine won't run. So that's one thing to check obviously right away. Let me get that out of the way. Okay, while I'm here, let me get the spark plug out. Now you got to remove the spark plug because we're going to have to block off the cylinder. Otherwise, this is just going to spin. All right, so that's not going to help us. So, there is a T25 Torx under here. But if, as, as you can see, as I try to turn it off, it will just spin. So I need to get over here and I'm using a rope for this. There's tools for this, but it seems to work okay. And I'm gonna shove the rope down into the piston hole, okay? So you fill up the cylinder with the rope that way the piston can't go up and down. 
and then we can turn the screw that's down inside the clutch drum without this turning. Okay. So there's a screw down inside there. Now we're at this point, and again, we need to keep that string in the hole because we need to get the clutch off. Also, there's a washer right here that you don't want to lose. Okay, that goes on. I try to keep these things in order. I know which direction to put them back on. So now there's an off direction here for the clutch. You're going to get your adjustable on there. And you're going to turn. go and again that turns off because I have the rope in this cylinder it won't let the piston turn over or otherwise you just turn the motor over so we'll pull that off and then there's a washer okay now there are five t20 bolt uh, screws holding this cover on one two three and then two underneath here Show you a quick two underneath to hold the fuel tank on. I need to come off again. I'm going to keep those separate, those are different than the other ones. Pull the fuel tank out of the way, and then this should lift off. All right, now I'm basically done with this for now. I'm gonna flip this over so I don't lose these screws. So these are three machine screws that grow to the crankcase housing. All right, here in lies the problem. All right, Let me try to get over top of this a little bit better. Okay, so what happens, let me take this cover off. There's a couple things that can happen, but What happens with this one is there's supposed to be a nut, basically a lock nut that goes to like almost like an end of a uh, axle. It's here, it's right here. So it was obvious it was on there. This is supposed to hold that down. All right. This is I see this happen often. It's supposed to hold this down so that this doesn't pop up. When this pops up, it gets off of the spring and then you lose. You lose your your resistance, or it skips past, and then you you lose a bunch of your your loops. So this screen can come out with those two after those two screws. Get that out of the way. All right. This piece can come out. That doesn't this doesn't matter. You can leave it in too if you want, but I usually just take it out. Okay, that just fits into this little hole. Fits into that spring. And it's just it's just a buffer for for when you pull you don't hit you don't bottom out and tear your your cord it's basically like a uh, little extra re, um, spring for protection. Now I'm contemplating pulling this off right now, but I don't want the spring to pop up. But I'm going to do it anyway. Okay, it stayed together. All right, so I kind of cheated and pinched it together so I wouldn't lose it. This this goes on top of this, all right? And then it goes down into there, and this hook has to hook onto those, that hook right there on the side, all right? But before I do that, I'm going to save this. I want to replace this pull cord. So 
So I'm gonna unwind this all the way. Grab the pull cord from the inside. And we'll cut this off. Okay. Now remember, it's gotta go through that hole when you rewind this, otherwise you're gonna have to redo it. Pull that out. I'm gonna get some new line. About the same length here. Give myself an extra couple inches for the knots. And then I'm gonna put a tip on the end through there. Through here. And then through here. Tie this off. And then we'll tie a knot on the end here. Now, winding this up is a pain. Um, you have to kind of hold it and just keep pulling it around and getting it tighter and tighter and tighter. Um, and then, obviously this has to go this direction because the hook has to go on that hook. So then this has to go on top in this direction. So I'm gonna release this, hopefully. Lock that in. All right. Now I'm close. I just have to push this in a little bit further. One way to cheat on this is to lock this in like this temporarily and spin it like you're winding it up. And then you can push this piece in a little bit once you get enough of it. Just be careful, watch your eyes. It could go shooting, but you gotta hold it tight against. So I gotta wind it up just enough to get some tension off so I can push this piece in. There we go. And then I'm gonna slowly release it. Okay. There we go. All right, that was the shortcut. Obviously, if this comes all apart, you have to sit there and wind it piece by piece and in your hands, your hands get really tired. It's a really big pain in the butt. Anyway, so this goes down with that hook in that little plastic piece, hopefully. Okay, there we go. All right, and you can see the other end of the spring sticking out right there. Let me get this out of the way. Now, that part of that plastic piece has to hook onto that spring. So it's gonna go down this way. And you'll know when it's in because it's got resistance, otherwise it'll spin, okay? So now we're there. Then, this piece goes on. Again, this part of the plastic goes on that part of the spring. Gotta line it up again. There we go. All right, now we need to wind 
this up. But before we do that, I'm putting this lock washer on because I don't want any of this to pop out on me. And this, again, this is what the problem is with most of these things. This piece comes off. So we're gonna put it over. I'm gonna use a little socket that's about the size of it. I'm gonna go a little smaller. Right on top of there. And then I'm just gonna tap it. And now it's on and not coming off. While I'm here, I usually put a little bit of lube on there so it spins nice and smoothly. Okay. Now, there is a groove on this bottom plastic piece right there. We need to turn this until the groove almost lines up with the pull cord and then I got to pull the pull cord out and lock the string the pull cord into that groove like that okay now we need to wind it and we're going to go clockwise here. Two, three, four. I'm going to go five times to start and see what happens. Pull the cord out and let it pull in. All right, we're not far enough. So I got to go about maybe six or seven times. Pull it all the way back out. Hook it back into the loop. Go back clockwise two more times. One, two. Pull it out. And then give it a shot. There we go. Now we're all back together. All right. Now we just got to reverse the whole order. So let's not forget, we got to put this plate in. Goes down like that. There's a little lip here that you got to catch it on. Two screws. Okay. All right, now this goes over top. The spark plug wire has to go in the side hole here, otherwise it won't fit. Sometimes you gotta give it a little pull just to line things up. Okay, the three machine screws go in. Then the fuel tank with the two sharper screws. All right, now, I kept these in order. We got the big washer first, then the clutch switch, seems to be in okay shape. I'm just going to hit it with a little bit of sand quick. All right, that screws back on. Still have the string in the Still have the string down the spark plug hole. 
And we're going to tighten this down. There we go. Then, little washer pushing. And then, so that goes down over top of that. This is my T15 Torx again. Tighten that down. All right. Now that we got that back together, we're going to take this string out of the spark plug hole. We'll get this back side put on. You gotta make sure that that gasket is there. Okay. Now, flip that over. This goes underneath. Make, make sure you align the clutch with the cable. And we got the three front screws. And then we'll put the spark plug back in. All right. Okay. I just got this in, so I'm gonna I'm gonna service the carb. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that. I got that video on uh, recorded. So hopefully that helps. Uh, if you have any questions, obviously leave it in the comments. So I'll be, I'll be sure to get back to you. Um, again, uh, thanks for uh, checking out my page. Thanks for subscribing. Again, guys, have a good day. Thanks for watching.